join in from the car. Um, otherwise, he'll be here in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, because a couple of things on the agenda that would be good for him to talk about. All right. Um, go ahead, Tim. So um, I'll, I'll call a meeting of the Tilton Library Building Committee to for April 18 to order at 431. Um, and um, I would, has so everyone had a chance to review the minutes? Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes as written. So moved. Seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I will do a roll call. Uh, Candace Bradbury Carlin. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. Judy Holmes. Aye. Denise Mason. Aye. Tim Hilchey. Aye. Um, Vern, we're just approving the minutes. Uh, have you had a chance to review them? Yes, indeed. Um, I agree. All right. So that's unanimous. Um, a question for the minute taker. Yeah. Um, Julie, Julie made that motion, but I didn't see who seconded it. I'm Is that you, Denise? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And so now I'm going to um, try and call up the um, <clears throat> the agenda, which I didn't didn't download, so bear with me. Um, hello, Dan. How are you? How are you doing? Good. I'm glad I'm not having to download the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd probably blow up your whole server. I can want me to to forward that to you, Tim. Uh, well, I. I, I think you sent these, um, uh, let's see, where is the agenda? It was on April 13th. And it says agenda and Zoom link for 418 building committee meeting. Yeah, uh, this Outlook thing always blends stuff together so I can never. Oh, I'll, I'll forward it. Tim, I'm with you 100%. Yeah, Outlook is a nightmare. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, What's the first item? Why don't I just ask you what's the first item on the agenda? Automatic design, MBLC <laughs> updates, fun. renderings. All right, so I guess it's over to Phil, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything to report from the MBLC recently. Um, I imagine they will have seen the plans, right? I didn't yep. see yep. them specifically, but um, the last time we talked to them, they were pretty happy with what we were doing, so. Yes. She didn't call to complain, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I guess that what means that uh, we'll we'll need to wait for official. We need to send them to her again, and and we'll see if they say anything else. But my guess is they're going to want to see them regularly all the way through, and um, yeah. they always think of things. Um, and, and once they do, we'll we'll respond to them um, because sometimes they'll look at the same plan over and over again, and they'll um, and they don't have any problem with it. And then they find something um, that's been on there for a little while, and and uh, and then they they bring it up when they find it, you know. Uh, so it's not a it's not a, a perfect method, but so. These, these plans, these haven't changed since the last time we met. I, I've got them in here for reference. Okay. So that folks can see what we're looking at. Uh, and if anybody wants to kind of go back to the site plan and I can point out where you uh, are virtually standing when it comes to the, to the images that I'm gonna show you because mainly what I wanna show you tonight is we took a shot at what, the, what this thing looks like on the outside of the building. And, um, and it looks pretty good. I think we incorporated some of the comments that we talked about, some of the takeaways we had from that kind of scary looking massing model last time. Um, <laughs> and it, it's not done, but it's, uh, <laughs> but it's, but it's moving um, in, in, in that direction. Um, so you see, you can see clearly that we're trying to come up with a, a, a design that is kind of um, maintains the hierarchy of your original building out on the street. We're not trying to, we're not trying to compete with it. Um, 
we're not going to get to that level of detail and this is not a real masonry building the way that your original building is the masonry walls are holding up the roof and, uh, and that's not the case with a wood of veneer brick building um and so again we're trying to be inspired by it and um without trying to do a copy of it and mm. so everything like this i mean if you if if you would take a walk around the the rear portion of a building that was built in this era that might have had a stack wing at the back you would see i think some very similar details you know they they'd spend a little bit more money up the front with the classical columns and the coining and everything and then when you got to that stack wing in the back it would be a simpler version of the same thing and that's kind of mm. um what we're thinking as well okay. um we did we did put some solar panels on there <laughs> whether or not that's exactly what the arrangement will look like or not we wanted folks to, to be able to see that and see that you you'll be able to see it from the street even though the pitch isn't extremely uh steep you'll still be able to see those panels um and the most subtly facing uh roof is is out towards the street and you're keeping the same pitch from one building to the other yeah it's it's the same you'll be able to see that in one of the other renderings that we have okay. and i'm gonna so i'm gonna take you on a little tour uh, around the outside of the building i also okay. have the, the model uh up and so i could actually show it to you live if there's any if there's anything that people would like to see specifically i can i can do that I, I have a quick question. What what is this called? What what I put in? What are we looking at? This is a a, a rendering. Um, okay. Uh, uh, a this is a computer model of uh, of what the addition proposed addition might look like. Okay. And and so it, it, this is one of those things where it, it's it's in flux, um, and it's just like the plans. So if there's if there's things that you like about it and there's things that you don't, let us know, uh, and we'll try to uh take out or or redesign the things that you don't like and we'll keep the things that you do uh, so on that is... last one i have a question sure the 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 tree to the right of the truck has a white stuff behind it what's that yeah that um that's that small wing that pokes out in the at the at the rear um and you can see a little bit of that white oh. um we had originally put the link between the kind of larger masonry addition, the original building. We did that as a curtain wall, all out of glass. Um, mm -hmm. That went over like a lead balloon in town. Um, and so we were looking at uh, other options. And I've got some other views of that. And then again, I can open up the model itself and spin that around a little bit and show that to you. But I wanted to kind of show you these stills a little bit first. But it's a panelized system. The idea is is that it's a it's an uh, it's an imitation stone, and the idea is it picks up on the white stone that you have on your original building. So it's supposed to be sympathetic in color. You can see the panels but below the windows in the addition here, and the panels below your windows here, in a more traditional sense, are basically are, one is a representation of the other. And then I picked up on that for this um, as well. And then those same panels show up here, and they don't look quite as white. They're a little bit more gray, and if you look real closely, I don't know, I guess it probably depends on the resolution of your screen. This is kind of a stone pattern on that. Uh, and it's the same. The idea is that it would all be in that same tone that kind of picks up on that whitish stone that you have on the building. Um, asphalt shingle roof. Um, this could be uh, this could be copper, and it would patina to this green color, or it could be a pre-finished aluminum that's painted that color. So you can see the end of the building there. The idea is, is that pitch right there is is basically the same as, as the pitch of your uh, original building. I think I, there's another view in here. And we're not showing any paving or anything back here in the model. And again, we, we kind of focused on, yeah, so I think you can see it there. The, the pitch of the addition here is designed to look like the pitch of the original building. And again, not picking up on all of the same details, but kind of the form, um, the fact that there's kind of a, a larger masonry chunk between two windows at the end, we, we we picked up on all those cues from the original building. So it's gonna look like it belongs there, uh, again, without being a copy. Um, and there's a better view of that, of that stone-like material that we're looking at. There's a similar material on Greenfield for those of you that, uh, that went out there. And these panels are shown kind of small because they're picking up on the window layout and this window layout is got a series of kind of smaller panes at the top and larger at the bottom 
And that kind of picks up a little bit on the smaller panes that you have in your original building. Again, inspired by them without really being the same thing because it's really a different animal. Um, I, Phil, I have a question about um, the size. Um, uh, is, is it, um, are the, the people that you have in it, are they at the same scale as the building? The building looks huge compared to the people. To me. Uh, no, that, um, see this person right there, that's, that's a somewhat less than six foot tall person standing in front of a seven foot door. Okay. So it's, yeah. it's all drawn to scale. So you can see some people in there. Uh, those are all about right. Obviously, the people in the foreground are going to look a little taller. Um, that's a that's a child. Give you an idea of the of the scale. That's a a lady standing up on the second floor looking out the window. So you can see why we we did the larger panels down at the bottom and the smaller ones up above to so that you won't have a, a mullion right through your face there. Um, we wanted to make sure that you'd still be able to see out the window when you're on the second floor, whether you're sitting down or whether you're standing up. Thank you. It's surprising how many people don't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't stick a person in there, I'll forget. <laughs> <laughs> and so this view is kind of standing right up at this wall in the front, kind of parallel to that big, large tree. We, I, we did the best we can to kind of give you an idea about the way these trees kind of sit on the site. Um, these are the, the two big ones that you have, one at the front and then one in the rear. There's another much larger one that's further back and we didn't try to model that one as well. But, but um, this view gives you an idea about what the scale of that uh, two-story addition is at the rear. Um, obviously from the front, you only have about a story and a half because they've artificially created a couple of these retaining walls and then filled up the front lawn with, with soil to give your building that kind of perched on a hill um, feeling that a, a lot of buildings of that era did, uh, even though basically it's on a, uh, a flat site and that flight's flat site basically walks right into this lower level, the way that you walk into your lower level now. They didn't worry Before about right accessibility. Here, Pardon? <laughs> they didn't worry about accessibility. They didn't, they didn't worry so much about accessibility, but this, this, <laughs> this floor is basically on the same level as, as the door that you have in the addition right here that we're taking down. But I have two versions of this slide, and then we can, if you want to look at the model itself, I can show you that a little bit more. But there's two different versions of this. One that has the masonry arch mm -hmm. above the tops of the windows, and, and one that has this white stone. It's one of those things that you asked us to look at last time. This arch takes you right up into the steel framing that's holding up the roof. So in order to do a real window up there, um, we'd have to push the roof up or the windows would have to come down and, and the proportions would be a little off, but we could accommodate something like that. And that just gives you an idea about what something might like that might look like. Phil, and, and that last one, is, is the arch actually in there? I don't see any arch. Yes, yeah. See if I can. Very faint. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah, well, um, color. It's, it's the same color. Let's see if I can. It's a little faint. Let's see if I can zoom into this thing a little bit. Oh, yes, oh, it's very faint. Yeah. And um, so that could stick out a little bit or be recessed a little bit. Um, but the way that this is drawn, I mean, it, because this is a model, it's got heavy black lines drawn around everything that makes it much more um, like a coloring book than reality, right? And when <laughs> right. these dark lines were on there, it made it look like it was really something. Um, and so we took those dark lines off of there and it is a little mm -hmm. softer looking. But I could show you uh, what that looks like in the model if you're interested. Does folks see that okay? Yep. So this is going to be a lot easier to manage. I could. Turn on the brick arches there and 
and shut off the stone. And you can get an idea about oh, yeah. what that might look like. Kind of compared to the original building there. Yeah. We're, I mean, you're, you're up, you're, up uh, you're floating in the air here now. <laughs> <laughs> so one, of the, one of the things about a, a model is that, you know, uh, it allows us to look at, at things that you don't normally see from the ground. But mm. the, the little chimney um, sort of keyhole thing on the original building, you, you haven't put that on the addition, is that? that that's right. And um, that's just, uh, that's just honesty in the design in that mm -hmm. there's no fireplaces on the floors in here that a fireplace or that a chimney would serve. We mm -hmm. could put a little faker up there, but it's just gonna cost you a fair amount of money. And because it's not a real masonry building, um, that's just one wife or four inches of brick. And if we wanna build a big 16 inch thick blob of masonry up there, we're gonna have to put some steel framing up there to sit okay. on. It, okay. can, um, it's just, I'm afraid you're going to spend a fair amount of money on it. And then because it's up there in the weather, going through the freeze thaw cycles, it it uh, it could become a maintenance issue for you in the long run. Just thought, mm -hmm. given that this building is so kind of recessed back from, I mean, if you're standing right out there looking at your original building, this, this the whole idea of this addition is it really is kind of a backdrop to your original building. And you know, we're not going to be able to get all that nice looking um, detail and everything there. And you also asked about this end of the building, right? So that's what that's what that looks like. Phil, well, you have that that side up. Um, I meant to send these to you, but I, I took some pictures of the panels with the names of the um, writers on it. And they're on oh, yeah. this north side. There's Emerson. And Bryant is on this side. Are they right, right up, up there? there. Yeah. Yeah. And there's there's one on the north side, although it's behind the at the moment it's behind the the accessibility um, addition. But you can see it kind of poking up through. So I think it's still there. It's just underneath, on the other side. You think it's on on this wall here? It, no, on on the the um, the south side of the building, which has the staircase in it now. Oh, so. You that think that they're still up there? Yeah, the, I think it. they are still up there because you can you can see in the picture that they're poking out the the top. That little ledge at the top is poking out behind uh, the um, okay. the built. The, and but, I don't I don't know whose whose name is up there. Hopefully they didn't drill holes in them or anything, but we could yeah. probably repair them if we needed to. So there's that um, there's that mm -hmm. kind of stone like material. And again, this could be panelized in a variety of ways, but it's designed to kind of, it, and there won't be a crack in between the two buildings. This is just a little modeling error that I haven't <laughs> solved yet. Um, uh, but the idea is, is that it's designed to be the same stone material as, as you have on your original building to have mm -hmm. a similar tone to it. Right. And I, and I, I do think you should uh, take a look again at Greenfield. Because Greenfield has both smaller and larger examples of stone. The smaller stones, uh, kind of a terracotta color underneath the uh, covered walkway, and the larger panels are on the uh, uh, on the uh, west side of the building. Bill, this is just a uh, construction question. And um, is it you're thinking that are these brick I, I like the brick facade on the new part of it. Uh, that's just me. But would these be like um, prefabbed, and you would you would put them on the wall all at once in sections? Oh no, they they oh. build this they build this in place the way they did in Greenfield. I mean, we'll put up a steel structure, and then they'll they'll build the brick wall in front of it and tie it back to it. Okay, so it'll be individual mason laying bricks. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It, they they will be masonry units. Yeah, it's, it's 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 real brick. It's just only one wife thick. That's all. Yeah, no, I understand. It's just that in in New York City they take these big, full full size bricks, put them into metal containers, and then they stick them on the walls, 
all and right, they butt right, up right. against each other. So I was yeah, just a panel, figure a out panelized or a tilt up. Yeah, we're, right. We're, yeah, we're not proposing that. Okay, thank you. Stand up here. Is that a police car? No. <laughs> yeah, just doing a civic duty. He's wondering where all the houses went across the street. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> haven't, all have, the houses. haven't built all your neighbors yet <laughs> we need to have a book sale we need to have a book sale on the front lawn yeah yeah we we could i could put a little something on there if you if you'd like dan and i are doing another project in a in a and they said you know we have this big carnival every year in this parking lot and so we modeled the carnival so they could so they could be sure that it would still fit um <laughs> if you know if there's questions and people need to see it <clears throat> Put something in we there. actually we actually we actually droned it so phil could fit it all together <laughs> yeah now i'm gonna look from above here so can you put can the white things it. back up instead of the um yeah oh. what would you like to see i'm sorry the white instead of the white, when you go back line. just um switch back to the white things once sure. you go back down obviously just wanted you to see here that you've got because we pulled the parking lot out towards the property line, it's pretty much right on the property line there. You've got a pretty nice front lawn in there now. Yeah, it's um, nice. Uh -huh. In in this area next to this next to this building, and it's that's the little spot where your addition is, and then it's not too far before you get to the parking lot. And so that's all paving now for the most part. You you know how that tree is related to yeah. your paving, your driveways, and here. So this right. opens up the lawn um, quite a bit there. Nice. Yeah. And Sorry. and the um, the church next door, yes. where is that going to sit in relationship to the parking lot? Um, well, actually, the church is would probably be sitting here, partially on this this green element. I'm, you know, I was drawing north south, and so this this rectangular uh -huh. postage stamp of of land that this thing is sitting on, floating in space, um, is not orthogonal with the building. So the the church is probably sits in here somewhere. We'll we'll get that. That's actually shown on the um, on the plans, if I remember correctly. It's not. It's I, not too far from the edge. Yeah. That there's the so there's the rear part of the church. Oh wow! So when you're parking your car there, you're going to be right up next. That's to uh, six feet away from the building. You know, at the edge of the parking lot. Now I, you know, I'm not a civil engineer, and they may say, "Hey, that's not possible," um, and so we'll they'll end up doing something else. But that's what we think because it's so flat. We think that it's doable. And so you wanted to see this with the with the white again, right? Yeah. Oh, the window. The windows. So let's. <clears throat> I kind of like that. Yeah. I like the the arch because it picks up the arch windows, but because the windows have those the white above them, the stone. I mean, mm -hmm. I like both actually, but I think the arch is too subtle. Yeah. I mean, I think it's too subtle to really stand out. And I like the white because I think it relates to all the rest of the white that you know throughout the building. So right. I think it just carries on that design element. I prefer that. Yeah. The arches are extra money too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And they sort of look like eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we were going to run the windows up into the arches, that's one thing. Right. But just to have, you know, yeah. a shadow line, I don't yeah. know what it does for us. Right. I don't think it's worth the extra money. Yeah. <laughs> I like this better. Yeah. yeah. Too. So, so, so I, I got a question. How do you like? Uh, the uh, panelized end on the north side. This thing here? The, on the north side. North side. Other side. The outcropping. Yes. I, th I think it's a little abrupt. <laughs> Just a little, but. Hmm? I, I I, I, I like the paneling. I'm wondering if I, I'm, I'm wondering if the white's too much. Yeah, maybe it should be brick. That that's what I mean. Yeah. Or a gray. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think you want floating brick. Flo <laughs> no, no, on the other side. No, it's the other side. Oh, let me. No, that that looks the, the gable end of the building, Phil. 
yeah the, I, the I, north I'm, I'm trying and to fat. kind of show yeah. both of these things at the same time so you can, yeah, yeah you can yeah it's kind of contrast i'm okay with the white on the back of the building i'm sort of okay with that but on the gable end of the building it looks really funny to me yeah it doesn't look like it belongs yeah right. oops no do, do yeah, you think we, it would look okay if it would, do you think it would look okay if it was a different color? Better. I don't know. It, it looks too much like the current um what we have now, which we no one yeah, likes. Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of the barnacle. It, it, it yeah, it actually <laughs> won't look like a barnacle. <laughs> That's why I want you to look at I really want you to look at Greenfield as a homework assignment. Okay. Is is it possible to do that in the same this the same type of panel but a, a different coloration the same as the brick? Uh, so it'd be the yeah. same well, color. You're not, you, you, you won't match the brick exact. So that's the that's the rear end of um I'm sorry, the back side. That still doesn't sound good. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's that's but that's a total contemporary building. Yeah, it is. I agree. You're not, so, you're not uh, I, you know, mixing into an existing building. Yeah, I think you're talking well, about these with that. Uh, I'm not so sure because if you look at the front of the building, the right side of the building is is, is brick, and it, it and although it is not, <laughs> yeah, that's it, it's linear. I mean, it looks fantastic on that building. Yeah, but <laughs> so we have the brick is very modern. We have the, the 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 brick and the and these panels kind yep. of sit next to each other. Yeah, that, that, that goes really well together. It was merely to show you. Uh, it was really to show you a different colors that are available. This is a this is a gray that's darker, obviously, than we're showing. This is kind of a limestone color that picks up on the on the historic brick and limestone from of the of the. Um, but you also have black detailing there, Phil, which is adds to the contrast. Yes. It looks nice. Yeah. Yeah. That is, uh, and we got terracotta returns, and the terracotta looks nice too. I like that color. Mm. I like the gray. <laughs> you like the what? I like the gray, the dark gray. The gray, the dark yeah, gray. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that might be better on that end of the building. Yeah, I agree. Is or the, that color. That's the nice. terracotta under the, yeah. under the porch. That's very nice. It is. That that's a step up from our barnacle, Judy. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it would blend well with the brick, though. It seems like it's more orangey than the brick is. Well, I mean, brick does have that color in it. Brick is kind of like a, a, a terracotta. It's a it's mixed, a burnt clay, right? Different different yeah. reds and oranges. You, but you can see in this photograph across the street, there's a terracotta roof on that church. Yep. I'm mm. not trying to say that this is designed to look like that church, but you can see some of the colors that we did pick up come from the neighborhood. This terracotta mm. brick color. That's really what inspired that that tone right there. Yeah, I do wonder if that just a darker color on that end of the building because that's the more well, it's the less sunny side of the building, and it's the it's the more uh, less contemporary side when you're when you're at the street view. What, what I what I wanted you what I want you to look at is the smaller units and the larger units. And and think think of think of this end of the building and the connector piece, as you know, do you want less or do you want more? Uh, do you want more uh, joints? Mm -hmm. See how there's a lot of joints on this. Yeah, it's actually going to look going to look really nice with all the joints. Oh yeah, and yeah. terracotta has a lot of joints in it, and the the the, the cream color does not. Yeah, uh, the gray is kind of the gray is kind of in the middle of the two, and if you look at all three different colors on the building, you kind of get what I'm trying to say. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah, yeah. So sorry, those those are special panels on the corners. Um, so they didn't change with everything else, but that's okay. <laughs> I kind of like it actually. Hmm. Yeah. It kind of breaks it, makes it a little bit less blobby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bill, are these predetermined colors? In other words, you don't you don't color match these panels and get them manufactured for the job, or uh, it depends on the product that we're looking at. Um, so this this uh, up at the top here, that's probably a cast stone. We can have that made pretty much whatever color we want. 
Some of these uh, products, the ones at Greenfield, for example, I think there was probably a dozen colors to choose from, um, but different manufacturers have different colors. And so if there was something that we really were crazy about, we could ask them to submit on, on another manufacturer. Mm. <clears throat> so there's a little bit of leeway there. And then obviously the brick was designed to, we're trying to match the existing building as best we can. And, and you know, they, they probably don't make that brick anymore. So we'll end up doing something that's similar. Right. And, and the other thing that's, it's, you, it's not as much of a problem with your building, but lots of times in old buildings, you'll have real thin mortar joints and we need to do three eighths of an inch joint. And there's really no choice there. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a little bit more mortar but you, the joints on your existing building are a little bigger too. So we don't have to worry too much about that. Yep. But it is very difficult, it's very difficult to match joint uh, uh, mortar lines. Mm. Yeah, so I'm not trying to... That looks nice. That's what yeah. that looks like if you, mm -hmm. if you change, change it to more of a terracotta color. Oh, 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 I didn't realize you did that. I like that. I yeah, like that. I like it too. It Where's the little... door back there? Um, Right in here. There's a, there's a door coming out of children's and then there's a door um, that comes out of the rear of the lobby. Hmm. So meeting room is down there. This is the lobby, um, children's office. And then children's department is down here on the low side. And then up above you'd have teens uh, and then uh, the, uh, the circulation office. Uh, and then their reading room is in this space. Mm -hmm. And then the stack wing would be down the end there. Mm. Yeah, the seating on this side, looking out the windows at the rear. Nice. It looks good. It does. In, in terms of the front, the old part of the building, mostly with that, you're just going to be shoring it up and making it meet the code and do those things. But you're not really going to change anything on that, right? When, when you go into the old portion of this building, it's going to look a lot like I was going to say it looks, it's going to look a lot like it does now, but it's going to actually look better than it does now. Yeah. Um, we're, uh -huh. going to, we're going to clean it all up, um, kind of bring the woodwork back, give it a little bit more of a glow, but we're uh -huh. not planning on going in there and changing things. You know, we'll patch uh -huh. where things are broken. We'll do some new light fixtures that are a little bit more in keeping with what was probably originally there. Um, you know, we'll take out those fluorescent strips that they have in there and we'll do all the wiring concealed. We'll fix the cracked plaster and, Go see the place up. Okay. It'll change a little more significantly downstairs. So obviously we're, yeah, we're yes. redesigning down there. But it's not as pretty down there right now. But I mean, you got a fireplace down there, you know? I can't picture where that is. It's, oh, well, it's, it's, it's partially buried under the floor that they raised. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and so I think they might've drywalled around it. I don't know if it's still I in there so. or not, but it's gonna end up in the staff room. Nice. So. Can do so I'm not trying to speed us along. I just want to let us know that we're at five o'clock roughly and people need to leave at six o'clock. So sure. Um, what's what's I the don't next know we have, I don't know that we have too much more. <laughs> that, that was that was it for us. If folks kind of are happy with the direction that we're heading in the in the discussion that we just had, we'll 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 pick a I think that terracotta color we picked seemed a little bit red to me. Probably tone it down a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and um, and and keep going. Sound like folks like the minority, but I'd prefer a little more contrast and not try and match the brick. I kind of liked the the gray or the white. You want to try do the brick a little bit different? Happy to do that. What I what no, I no, 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 talking no, about no, the, panels. the panels. The panels. The panels. Yeah, what I liked on the um the one that you um the bump out from the north side. You know, the kids and teens. I like that you had different color panels because it seemed like it was terracotta, ah. brown, maybe a brown and like a, a light gray or something. Okay. I I, I liked that because it because of the because the the current building does it, it is it is broken up of colors and shapes and I kind of like that that addition is broken up a little bit to sort okay. of go along with that. We'll we'll take a look at some options in in that realm then. Um, if it's not too much trouble, I think it would be helpful um, for the town to see what it's what the where the church is going to sit in relationship to the parking lot. And sure. because there's a lot of talk about what's going to happen with that church. And um, I guess it's going to get used as a temporary senior center. And 
um, there's a lot of people that are very invested in that, and I think they would want to see see how it goes with the with the okay. addition. Yeah, we'll we'll put a little bit of that background in there for you. I think it makes Thanks. sense. It'll make it'll make more sense if we do things like we're looking down the street and how it's going to fit yes. in the neighborhood and and the neighbors. I may not model everybody's house, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know okay. we. We have some other houses that we've kind of dropped into models before as kind of stand-ins. Uh, if, if folks don't mind too much, we'll pick a similar house and change the paint color so it kind of looks like their house and <laughs> don't look too close. It's fine. If the engineers come back and say, you know, the parking lot's going to be basically within two feet of the exterior of the part of the church, and they say you need to move it is is one of the reasons why the parking has been pushed so far to the edge because you lengthened the extension when you made it thinner you made it further project yes. out towards the south yes and not not exact not suggesting this is a good idea i'm just asking you if you were to take the whole building and push it back towards the north even in the current the same orientation you would have more of a more of an outcrop up that the the south the north end and it would maybe sit so i'm just wondering is that something that could be done if the engineers tell you you have to do it uh if we had to uh yes it would mean that the plan would have to change completely right yeah i mean if it's a couple feet no big deal but well that's what i'm talking need, about like two feet i need three more feet i could manage that if i had to move it 20 feet and right. where we're linking and where the stairs and the elevator are all right. that yeah. goes out the window yeah, but there's a little way yeah, but we, we can you can you can easily move the uh parking lot shift the parking lot a little bit too i mean there's a couple of puzzle pieces here not just right. the building yeah i mean if we shift the parking lot and take a little of that green space to give a little breathing room to the uh, to the uh church i think we might get the same effect we might lose one space on the left side because there's one more on the left than on the right because of the angle but I, I, you know, I, I, I'm quite confident we're going to make that fit. We've got plenty of room there. I was just sort of, uh, you know, saying what ifs. Not, right. not that I favor it. I just wanted to make sure there was well, one. It creates a nice space by the front entry. I really like that. Yeah, it, it does. It looks nice. Yeah. yeah. So do you feel like, uh, this is a question for Dan and Phil, do you feel like, because the next thing on the agenda is the, the public forum that we can- Let's talk. Let's talk about that. Okay. So what I think we should do, what I think we should do is um, schedule a public forum for three weeks or four weeks from now. And I think we should, Phil can come back with it, with this a teeny bit more developed with the church in it and show a few color options for you guys to pick one and then that following week, we can we can present that to the town, because we're certainly far enough along that I feel comfortable doing an a, a public forum. So you're thinking um, like a, a a Tuesday night, so instead of this meeting, is that it doesn't doing? matter to me. It's oh, up okay. to you. And you then what do a Saturday? Guys... I'll do a Saturday. Town hall. Does that seem like the best? Uh, um, Most space. Again, it's up to you guys on how you, what you want to do. It, it, you know, it might be at a selectman's meeting, so hmm. you know we can you know, knock off two things at once, present to the selectman, and do a public forum hmm. if the selectman would allow us. Okay. Does, does anyone know a selectman? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see why that would necessarily be a problem. I think uh, it could work. So would that have to be a Wednesday, Tim, or? That's traditionally when it is, but we schedule special meetings, you know. So okay. um, we'll be we'll be beyond the town meeting, which is the the key right. ingredient here. Right. A lot more. Everyone, everyone's in a better mood after town meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone gets agitated as we roll up to town meeting. So yep. um, I would love to be able to nail a date down because we're gonna the library is gonna have some handles. I, I emailed you the file for that, and we just want to plop in the date if we can. Just you know, it's a week from yesterday is the town meeting, so I don't know if we'd be able to schedule this before then. But I'd love to have that on there so people can have it in front of them. 
Um, well, I can okay. say um, we don't have a regular town meeting on May 10th, and that could be a date that you might consider. In other words, it would be a select board meeting, but it would be more de dedicated to talking about the library. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I'm just speaking for myself, but, but what's that? Does that feel like enough time for, for that, for that Phil and Dan? And if not, we could do the 17th. Okay. Well, I, as long, as long as we have one more meeting, just to, to, to go through the, the changes and make right. sure that we've captured that, uh, the church adequately. Uh, I think that's, I think that'd be great. I, I know Phil has enough time. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Right, Phil. Yeah, really, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you rather do the tenth or the seventeenth? Um, I guess this is for everybody because you know we'll have to prep for the meeting too, as far as how we're going to present it and. I I personally am not available on the tenth, but that okay. doesn't matter. I'm also not available on the tenth, but you don't really need me. Don't say that. <laughs> we already got our money. <laughs> All right, so. Are you available on the 17th, Julie? So if you want both of us, you could do the 17th. Okay. Yeah, That's and then tell me, you just do a save the date. Okay, great. And we don't know time yet, so I'll just put the date. Um, cause we'll probably want to work that out with Carolyn and Trevor, right? Yeah. And I'm sure we can do that before, um, town meeting. Oh, okay. All right. Then I guess if you do, just let we me have know. a meeting tomorrow. Okay. I believe you. Yeah. And so Dan and Phil, would you be there with us in person? Yes. 17th. Yeah. Sure. Excellent. Yay. And at that point, the Greenfield staff, they will have already been moved into the library, right? Wow. Well, that's that's well <laughs> still should. still waiting on switches. Oh. Well not waiting if the construction's done, but the uh, town's IT person is um, making you wait. Uh, a little behind. Hmm. <laughs> Come on, Fernando's on top of everything. The building is fabulous. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's a it's a supply chain issue, is what it is. They they ordered the, the switches and the, and um, they they might ship today, but when exactly that means they're going to show up, I don't really know. Um, their their plan is to to move on the first, and so it's still doable. Mm -hmm. but, you know, we're just kind of waiting for the switches to show up so that they can have computers and telephones. Um, if they move over there, they can unpack and then, you know, and then they'll just look at each other. <laughs> they won't be able to work. Drink tea. <laughs> Drink tea. That's it. <laughs> um, okay, so, great. So this, this meeting on the set May 17th, it, it's, it's, it's a select board meeting at which the building committee will make a presentation and show pictures. Is that? We'll do, okay. we'll, we'll do, we'll do pictures plans and Phil probably do his fly through. A fly through. <laughs> you know what I mean, a fly around. <laughs> fly around, not a fly through. <laughs> he definitely doesn't have enough time to do the fly through. No. <laughs> That's a lot of data points. That's a lot of data points, yeah. <laughs> yeah, movies is... <laughs> I'd rather get to the point where we're pretty confident in what the thing looks like before we spend the time doing a movie. Um, it's just. Yeah. Maybe have some of the elementary school kids create the um, inside through Minecraft. We, uh, <laughs> they did that in Hadley. That was, that was pretty cool. We had some really? pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Wow. Um, we also <clears throat> went into one town um, and they, they wanted us to come in and make presentations to the elementary school kids. So we went in and, each like two classes at a time come into the cafetorium and, and we made a little presentation and then they went back to the class and drew what they wanted in their library. 
And it was like the dinosaur room and the free pizza room <laughs> and all this stuff that these kids, K through four or something like that. They drew all this stuff. And then they pinned all this stuff up at the library, all the pictures that the kids drew of all what their dreams of the new library would be. And then all those kids brought their parents down to the library to see it. So it was pretty cool because they got people that may not always go to the library to come down to the library. Mm -hmm. Nice. Great. So back to the date of this meeting for just a second. If if you do it at a select board meeting, that's a regular select board meeting, and you do your presentation and you fly around and you take public comment, at that point, like it's going to have to be done and we're going to get out of the way because the select board is going to have other business to do. Um, yeah. There's not going to be like, a, you know, coffee right. hour afterwards for everybody stands around and chats kind of thing, right? Hmm. Yeah, so an alternative Not that we would provide coffee, but you know what I mean. <laughs> an alternative would be to schedule it on a Tuesday or something. So yeah. I'm fine with that. Well, could we do it earlier if we did the public forum earlier and then and then what time does the select board meet usually, Tim? Well, you know, the thing is that select board meetings can be three hours on their own. Yeah. And so do we want to add another hour and a half to our three hour meeting? I'm not really sure. Hmm. Uh, so I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was suggesting if you meet at seven, then they could have the public forum at five, and then those people could disappear, and then we could hang around and yeah, yeah, and attend your meeting afterwards. But I, I'll, I'll do whatever you'd like me to. Denise, people aren't going to show up at five o'clock. That's I think that's too early. And I was just thinking that on um, May six is supposed to be Founders Day. Okay, so I guess. The uh, 350th is doing something. They're holding an event, and it's going to be in between the church and the library. I guess um, I talked to Peter Thomas last night. The kids are going to come over on Friday and hang some bells or something, and then they're doing something. So I'm thinking that we also have something. We want to put a table out through CCI because we're doing just long, complicated, but we're doing a um, complete neighborhood. So we're going to be doing sort of public outreach. And I spoke with, well, emailed Candace briefly yesterday to say, hey, what's the library doing? I know that that day the libraries, I think friends are collecting books. So I think that's a great opportunity to pass out some flyers because just because you put it on, you know, on uh, the town website or hand things out during town meeting, people aren't going to necessarily remember to come to that meeting. So the more outreach that we could have would mm -hmm. be better. So we could hand out flyers that day. And I was going to talk to the women's club to see if they could do a bake sale. So there's going to be a flurry of activity on that day. And right. I think it's just a better opportunity to hand, get the word out. Right. And then also on May 13th is going to be the actual book sale and, and the plant sale right. um, for the trustees. And so that'll be another time um, to to grab people. Well, and that may be after, after the fact, if we're doing it on, what is it, May um, May 10th? That would be May 9th? I don't know. Well, maybe Tim, if you wanna to talk to Carolyn and, um, yeah. and what Trevor. Dates, what dates work for people? I think um, we just lost Julie. Yeah, she had to leave. And. Uh. Um, the 16th is totally free. There's an assessor's meeting at the moment, but there's nothing else. And the assessors meet in their own room. So town hall presumably would be available. For that's, the that, that's the Tuesday? Tuesday. May 16th to Tuesday. Uh, let's just do it on the 16th and be done with it. Yeah, it's easier to make a decision than to have five different options out there. And yep. True. So that, that way we can, and, and we, can, we can control it. And Julie's right. After the meeting, you're going to have public wanting to ask questions, and you right. guys are going to want to go do uh, grievance yeah. errands. So would that be like six o'clock? Do you think that's a good time? People can get home from work. Yeah, I think you'll get a better turnout at six o'clock than five o'clock. Okay. And then that gives two opportunity, actually three opportunities to hand things out: the twenty fourth town meeting, um, even possibly um, election day. Mm -hmm. And then a few other times, the Founders Day, and then your library. So you've got ample opportunity handout to. Yeah. Okay. And, cool. and what a, exactly? A, what exactly are we calling this event? Public forum. Well, I, I would I I would call it uh, 
the public's invited to review uh, the new library designs. I mean, just tell it what it is. So Dan, is that something that um, your office would do as part of, of the marketing of the yeah, project? Get, I'll, I'll, I'll have Megan get in touch with you guys and we'll, okay. we'll put together something really nice. Okay. Great. Well, if we're done with that, that that's a great segue to the next uh, agenda item. Solar energy grants. Uh, nope. Nope. P3 outreach. There you go. Outreach. <laughs> and this is something I didn't know if Dan, Felt like we need to discuss, but I put it on there just in case he thought to, he wanted to bring it to the group. Uh, we definitely need to do outreach as we're moving along. And, you know, we, we like to do it in the form of newsletters uh, and, and public forums. After we get this design forum done, there's really not much for the public to see as we go technical. Um, we could give them updates every month or so on where we are technically uh, with, you know, construction documents and coordination and things like that. Pretty bland stuff. Uh, and obviously when we get to construction, it, the newsletters get a lot more exciting. But I do think we're at a point where we should start putting stuff out to the public and we'll be happy to do all of that and explain to people, you know, the materials and things of that nature within the newsletter. And I guess my question about that was, um, when should the first one go out? Because the one that Dan um, showed me that um, I guess Megan had done was, mm -hmm. um, it showed the plans. And I just mm -hmm. didn't know if we want to wait until after the public forum before we released that out. Well, yeah, the reason why we did the first one, Candace, is because the plan was, was basically accepted. And I think whether the design of the facades are not, they're not, we're not done with the facades yet. That would be another one. So it depends really on what you want to educate your people. It's up to you. Some well, towns, they don't, they, they don't want to put anything out. Other towns want to put as much information out as possible. It's a, a local option for you guys. We're here to write the newsletters if you want us to. We're definitely doing them during construction. Everyone reads the Greenfield newsletter. No, I think it's great. I just wonder if the first one should go out like the day after the public forum. Um, At that point, we'll have facades and I'll have to do a different letter. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, the, the reason why, one of the reasons why, well, one is the drama of the unveiling at this, you know, waiting to that date, but also like answering questions. And, that, and, that, and, that's, and that's a very good point. Hmm. That's a very good point. That's why I'm saying it's a local option as to what you guys want us to do. We gave you an example of how we do outreach. You know how we're gonna do it. You you know, we brand it and you guys decide whether you wanna do it or you wanna wait until after the outreach. We can always do it right after the outreach with a couple of pictures of people looking at the plants. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Yeah, what, what do the rest of you think? Do you feel good about that? Yeah. Awesome, thank you. All right, solar energy grants. This is something that um, I had a note on my desk for a while, a meeting a couple of weeks ago with, um, it was our first meeting that with Phil and Lauren and Andrea from the MBLC when we, they, we first showed them the um, updates to the schematic design and they had talked about solar energy grants um, and Eversource. And I thought maybe Dan, you might know something about that, how to get the ball rolling. I, I, I have to be honest with you. I, I don't know what grant program she's talking about mm. uh, because they come and they go and they come with cycles and they, and, and there's different, different options usually on them. And I don't know whether news allowed or whether re retrofits allowed. I don't know whether we have to have the design done, uh, you know, know what, I, how many kilowatts we're looking for. I I'd have to do a little more homework on that Candace. Okay. So okay. I'll reach out to Lauren. Uh, okay. Between meetings and try and get a little more of what's in her head. Okay. And I think actually it was more Andrea that seemed to she seemed to know a lot about that. Um, well, you are are you are you a stretch energy code town? I don't yes. know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I I I'm probably guessing there's a DOER program for that. 
I don't know how much we can get uh, or, 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 or what we can get, but it might be, you know, either through green communities or, you know, a, a straight up DOER program. But I have to, I'll have to do a little more digging. And I just, I, I, I can't pretend to tell you, I know all the grant programs. Yeah. This is a zillion you know, of them. Well, I don't even know so, if that's your purview. Is that something that I should be doing or I wasn't sure? No, we, if you want to, if you want to get a grant, we'll, we'll, we'll get the ball rolling on the grant. Okay. Great. Um, unfortunately, what we've found on most grants is they never line up with the project. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't apply for the grant and the solar panels can't go on six months later. Right. Uh, it, it, it's all the, it's all the engineering part of it that is is the angst part of it. It's not the actual physical putting the panels on. The building will be designed to accommodate solar panels. It'll be designed for the weight of the solar panels. There'll be conduits in the uh, building to run the power down to the inverter in the electric room. All that will be in this building, regardless of whether you get the grant today, tomorrow, or two years from now. Okay, great. All right. Denise had a question. Yeah, uh, Candace, you might want to reach out to the Energy Committee in okay. town. Um, you know, talk to MA Swedland. I forget who's chair. And the other thing is, um, I know that the, um, I'm not sure about the library, but I know the Senior Center over in Hadley. I'm not sure whether they have solar panels on yet, but I know that was the plan. So, you know, you may want to reach out to some others to see if you did get solar panels, did you get grant funding for them? Okay. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So are we done with that idea? <clears throat> so what's contracts status mean, Candace? Contract uh, status yeah. means that I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we have our contracts yet. I think we're waiting on Candace. I mean, uh, Casey. Is that something so I, should, I should ask her about, Dan? I did leave her uh, two messages. Um, okay. I, it's town meeting time. Okay. You know, I, I asked Phil to send a bill in. Uh, yeah, you're still going to have to pay us. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I, asked, I asked Phil to send a bill in because sometimes when the bill comes in, because Phil's saying, you know, I haven't billed. I haven't billed because I haven't got a contract. I said, give me a bill because sometimes when the it. bill is sitting on the desk, it forces the uh, contract to be signed. Exactly. So, okay. And if you need me to be a part of it, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just wait. I'll, I will call you if I need help. Okay. Yeah, or just, you know, CC the select board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I try not to do that. It doesn't hurt. I know, I know but you're on the committee, so you can say where uh, you, you can ask tomorrow's yeah. meeting. I'll mention it at tomorrow's meeting. Unless I have go. a senior moment. <laughs> okay well that's good news um any new business i don't think so i have not right. um so then what so is is like may 9th a good time for the next meeting or or what do people think is that what a monday or tuesday sooner it's a tuesday tuesday yeah is that, every two weeks. is that is that two weeks from now that's or is that too long that's three weeks that's three weeks um well um uh, also may 2nd is uh that's um town election right it is so would you does that matter but does that matter no does may 1st may 1st is the election i think oh if monday yeah, may, may first yeah and next year it might be on a tuesday yeah may 2nd is fine with me um, if it's okay with you guys, give us a little more time to, well, I don't know, Phil, would you rather have an extra week to, it doesn't matter. No, uh, it, it'd be better this way. That way, if I need, if I show you something, everybody goes, oh, you ruined it. And I have to go back and fix it. I'll have more time before the 17th. Okay. <laughs> before, before the 16th, the 16th, not the yeah. 17th. Yeah, the 16th. No. Nope. Are we yeah. doing the public forum on the 16th now? Yeah, 16th. I decided not to, in, not to get the select board. I've sent an email to Casey and, and okay. the assistant town administrator to see if we can have that date. Oh, okay. The 16th. So that's, uh, I'll put that down as a tentative public forum 
at the town yeah. hall? Is yeah, at town hall, it's six. It's six. Okay. And the next meeting is May 2nd? Yes. 4 30. 4 30. Yep. Okay. Um, right. I have one question from the minutes for tonight. Um, we didn't take any vote or anything on the the what the the presentation that Phil made. We don't need to do any of that, right? We're just no. just put in to say that we saw it and looked at it. And okay, you you, you saw it, you looked at it, and uh, members gave their thoughts. Okay. All right. Um, well, so. Anything last chance to bring anything new up? Oh, right. yes, yeah, sorry. I did, I did write a, a note to myself, which I just looked at. Um, we, you know, I don't know if you guys remember this, uh, Phil and Dan. We do art exhibit monthly, or not monthly, like six weeks art exhibits. We've been doing it for years and years. And, but you know, it's, it's in the circulation room amongst the stacks. So it's not like a room. And people have been asking staff and, um, and artists and patrons. Um, where would we put that? Where would we be able to exhibit art in the new building? So, so, so uh, the MBLC, uh, I went through this in Monterey and you know, big artist community in, in the Berkshires, as you, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. And they, they were not, um, they wanted to make sure that the library came first and that we, you weren't designing uh, for art, that art could be accommodated within your design. Yeah, that's what I'm asking, because I know at this point it's not in the program to have a gallery, but I also don't want to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I I'm guessing you're going to have space in the uh, uh, the multi-purpose room. Right. Um, uh, mm -hmm. That's probably that where it's going to be. You're so going to set up tables for the pieces and hang pictures on the wall. Um, that's what I'm guessing you're going to do, but I, I'd frown upon saying it's being designed for art. Oh no, no. I mean, um, it's not a it's not a programmatic thing. I just think as long as we have wall space, that's going to make sense yep. because people now the community is now used to it, and um, and the way we have it now, it's it's integrated into our spaces. It's like mostly in one room, but then there's a few spaces in another room, and it's the, in the adult section, um, not really not in the kids or teen section. Um, doesn't mean it couldn't be. But I just wanted to make sure that we didn't eat up all our wall space, that we yeah. save some nice, consistent space for hanging. When we get when we get to when we get to design development, we can identify spaces, okay. and we can identify you know places like you might have, uh, you know, things that have to be there. You know, do you want a dedication plant? Where do you want to put it? Do you have a donor tree? Where do you want to put it? Right. Things right. of that nature we can deal with in design development. Okay. Um, this certainly, I think Phil has demonstrated uh, that he listens to you guys and took out all the glass. So there should be a lot more solids in the building for you to be able to put things. <laughs> and the, and the, the, the current building has the hangers that uh, were have been installed so that you can put the pictures, the, hang the pictures very easily. And yeah. I hope that those hangers, if they have to get taken down for the, for the fixing up of that, could get put back up because that... Yeah those good spaces up in those two rooms for um, art. Yeah, because so you would, wouldn't have to really make any changes. Right, and, and that having the hanging system really helps. Yeah. Okay. It's not a huge deal, but it's something that's part of our mm -hmm. culture. So. Keep, it, keep, it on, keep it on your list for design development. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm favor. just kidding. Oh, you do that so fast. Burn moved. Who was second? That was slick, Tim. All right. Well, listen. <laughs> thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good. Uh, good. Thanks. Hey, Candace, are you running this? Can you stay on for a minute so I can talk? Yeah. 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 No, I was just going to talk about um, I just got confirmation that for the um, six that we will have the consultants that we're working with on complete neighborhoods. So we're gonna be doing that along with Founders Day. And then I am gonna to talk to the women's club to see if they could do a bake sale, get tons of people. So it's a great time to hand stuff out. But then yeah. also you said that in the morning, um, you're gonna, uh, people, you're gonna be collecting books. So do you know what time that is? 
because I want to yeah, think about from, uh, 10 to noon. Oh, perfect. Okay. And then it's one to four for the founder's day. Okay. Now, so do you know, is, is Peter still going to do ring the bell 350 times? Yeah, you know what? That's, that's just absurd. I mean, I, I would, I would, there would be a mutiny. Let's put it that way. Oh, no, no, you know what? I, I talked to you all. Know, I talked to Carolyn about that today. I said, first of all, you can't have people going in and out of the building because it's just not safe. And mm -hmm. so she said they were talking about doing an external pull, you know, a rope so that no one has to go in the building. But there's no way. 350. I mean, what do you think, Tim? That would be insane. I am going to say that certain people love this idea. So don't think it's going to go away just because you think it's absurd. <laughs> 350? Oh, my God. You know, there's a whole Dorothy Sayers novel. Um, 